some calls that the phi based bodies have the composites of every single animal and insect that is on the planet. The spider part of individuals is what they call the silver line, okay? And the silver line is what comes from the back of, of the, of the uh, individual. It's like an umbilical cord. It actually could be in different places, by the way, and sometimes there's several lines, but let's just hone in on one known as the silver line. And then what it does is it connects to a specific part of the body, okay? And then what that does is connects the person to the hive, okay? Because what phi is, and that's why it's also symbolically related to the pentagram, especially when it's corrupted, it's more of, it has curved lines, like the procession of Venus in the sky, like what you see on a sand dollar, it has, it has a curve. This kind of uh, uh, body is a hive-based body, okay? And what it means to be on a hive is that we have, we basically two arms, two legs, and a head, so that connects us in a certain way. So what happens is when we're moving around, we're weaving webs, this is other people interacting with other people. Even a person's frequency can interact with a per another person without the other person even saying anything. You ever been in a room and somebody's just depressed and you don't have to say anything, but you can feel the depression, right? So what happens is, is that there's many frequencies interacting on top of other frequencies, and this creates what looks like a web. And this web has geometric patterns to it. And the more larger webs, from what I began to see, some of the larger webs wrapped around uh, the field are artificial. Somebody is casting webs, casting nets, okay? And I think that gets into Wicca and that gets into weaving webs like Bohemian Grove and, and all this, which is basically to use the Hartman grid, which is the organic grid that moves through the planet, which is the connection to the hive, to send energetic principles down them affecting the people that are actually on those grids and lines. And this is called the craft. This is the work that's done in the streets of Washington, the work that's done in pretty much every country that uh, uh, one who's worked for, for uh, Pharaoh, which is a, uh, a Freemason, has been able to do the work. So in every city, country that there's current moving through, currency, money, talismans basically, there will always be work, especially downtown. And downtown is the, what's called the center of the vortex. It's where all the energy is being pulled in. Uh, generally, the, the, it comes from the Hindu term city, which means a power. So in the city, downtown is the power of the vortex. Generally, what you see there, and this is replete, you can go on Google Earth and just watch it if you understand how to measure it out, is obelisks. And these obelisks, this, this knowledge was taken from Kemet because According to the command tradition, the, the Tetragrammaton was animate on the dimension and under the, the name Cain. And the being would inscribe on these obelisks these symbols. And then it would command the ones who were commissioned under it, which is a, basically a Freemason, to go and take these to other lands. And it would put those people on that land under the dominion of that wavelength, that web. So again, this, this is web weaving, okay? So we could talk about how to, how to really um, untether. <laughs> I think I had this word today. Um, but one would still need to realize that I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't recommend that because that connection with the planet, unless you, you know, you're a master of depth, you know your own thing, do what you do, but that connection that you have with your planet is also the roots. It's like your mother's umbilical cord. So before you untether, you will really need to know what you are doing with going through planes. And this is, uh, to, to make this very clear, that this is not all offline, this is some wild stuff. See, the Tibetans, as we were talking about on, on the other show, so what the Tibetans do is that they have a bell and they have a dorje rod. And when they ring that bell, like these people spend their lives meditating. Do you think that if they're not tapped into something? If you spend a few minutes meditating, you can see there's potential. If you learn how to breathe, you can see that there's even more potential. It's like getting high off air, or i.e. bliss. And then if you understand how to use that energy to send back through your body to awake the rest of the body, and then you, you see that there's even greater potential because you actually can leave the body like that. You ease out of the body because you've gone into a higher vibratory frequency. So 
even though someone maybe at the mall hasn't been able to accomplish that, these people over on the other side of the world, that that's all they really have and that's all they really want. They've accomplished that, but they also know what they're doing. You can't, there's more, there's more to it. You know how most religions just stop with getting to heaven. <laughs> this, this stuff talks about what you need to be doing when you finally get there because you're going. Everyone's going. Everyone will be leaving here and going to some heaven or haven. So it seemed to me also when I was younger, we should probably put a billion dollars into that. That's what I that's what really what my biggest pity was when I was when I was a kid and I'd just be all strung out there and upset. And then if somebody ever asked me what was going on, I'd be like, man, we just put a stealth bomber up. Because I grew up on a, on a military base and the, the ticket on the stealth bomber was crazy. But why wouldn't we put that money into figuring out what happens when we die? After all, who cares about a stealth bomber if we can't figure out what happens when we die? Because that means none of this stuff will be important. So I think this is from past lives of getting to the point of finally realizing the only real thing that needs to happen first when you come into time is figure out how to get out of time. Because there's a certain phenomenon that you watch occur with a lot of people, every, excuse me, everyone. And that's the older you get, the less will you really have to keep pushing through this. Now, I'm not saying that there's not some, some older folks that's really kicking and moving. I'm just saying on a general perspective, when you get older, you run out of a lot of this energy that is your will and your passions and your desire to do something new. You get rigid is what I'm saying. And then what happens is, is that on the auric field, I'll tell you what it looks like. The person has developed around their body this gray field. And then they look like a knight. And so every time someone's up laughing, jumping, clapping, and wants them to dance, they're like, mm-mm, mm-mm, I don't dance. <laughs> Get away from me. When it's time to shout and to go into joy, they're like, mm, that's... <laughs> I don't do shout and joy, that's not. And you can watch these Saturnalians. Because that's what, that's what that means. Gray is the color of Saturn. Lead is the, is the element of Saturn. It means the one who's least affected by light. So when you're younger, of course, all the lights are affecting you. And this is, that's what they call blinded by the light. So we need to get to this balance spectrum where, one, we don't become the Saturn alien that's not willing to trust anymore. So you can't make the leap of faith over death and into the next stage of your consciousness and catch yourself. So this is wh where we're at now. And it's like, how many times is this message going to come across? Because it's always going to be the same message. Get out of duality. Now, if you want the story of duality, oh, man, once upon a time, <laughs> four score and ten years ago. You know, there's, they are, we're storytelling people. So, you know, you could get some drums to that. We can get some fire. We can bring in all the elements. And we can tell the story of, we could spend five or ten hours on just Rama. We can go then on to Apollonius and then we can get into Apollo a little bit if we want to be fanciful and then we could break it back all the way down to Inky if we want to you know really get in there and then how about Zervan <laughs> what was he up to and you see so we have so many different beings in our pantheism and if we took it ever externally oh my goodness don't do that because what the pantheism one is every position of the sun as it moves throughout the vault of the sky and through the underworld. This means that this is every single frequency in 360 degrees, even the dark ones, for those who only like the light. And that's what this whole world consists of from the sun or the soul, which is who? The soul is us because the soul is one. So the soul says, well, I, I don't, it doesn't matter if you guys thought you were separate. Obviously, the sun's not saying anything, but just the dialogue. It doesn't matter if you guys are all think you're separate. It doesn't matter. There's no such thing as separation, sillies. And until you figure that out, which is going to be quite difficult, it seems, then you cannot get, the, you can't come up through the straight and narrow way. You can't come through the straight path. Until then, you'll have to go through the back door and you'll have to zigzag up the tree, meaning to go through the, the tantra, which is arousal and sexual pleasure, or through the uh, yoga, which is the, the pain uh, of the bending and the contorting of the body, and two, you can get the kundalini, which is your energy system, balanced so that it can come up to the straight path and go 
right into the uh, into totality. And so, <laughs> you know, I thought that was, you know, I think it was stomachable. I mean, I, like I would say to people all the time that there was a beginning to this. And so if it's not making sense at all, it may behoove you to go and check out some of that stuff because we all started at a certain point with this. And th this is things that we've studied together, we've experienced together, and we've come to find it to be very true. But that also is amongst a collective of individuals who have gone beyond, have looked to see if they can use their spiritual factors. Do we really have a third eye? Can we really control our dreams? Are there really elements in nature that can turn on the energetic principle of the body? Can you really restructure water? Can you rebuild water? Can you wipe the memory panels from water? So asking those questions, going deep, in into, deep into fringe to get the answers because of a, a something that drives us, a will that drives us to say that I'm a sovereign, I'm not going to get trapped here. I don't care what the story is. I don't care who's on top, who's on the bottom. To me, we're all the same because I'm a sovereign. And then moving into that next frequency and, 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 and of course, doing that with arousal and enjoyment rather than through fear, which won't get so far.